In the last tutorial, we learned how to make some more elaborate base R plots. Um, we added a bunch of parameters to our plot function. Now we don't want to re we want to reuse this plot function, but we don't want to keep copying and pasting all of this work with different data. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to put this into a function form so that we can reuse it and have different numbers, and it'll work just fine with ease and reusability. So let's start off with a basic function. First I want to show you what a function is. You've already been using them throughout these tutorials, so I'm going to do the mean function. I'm going to take the average of some numbers, right? So I'm going to take the mean of numbers, and I will take the average of 2, 3, and 4, and I'm just going to do command enter on that, and let's break this down and dissect it. The name of the function is called mean, and it takes in a parameter. Now, it looks like there's multiple numbers in here, but there's really only one argument or parameter in here, and that is the one vector that contains these three numbers. So it's one argument when inside of this mean function. So let me uh, write this function structure down for you first so you get the idea. So whatever function name you want to call it, so my function, we're going to say my function equals a function, see it's a reserved word, it changed colors on you, and you got to have open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open bracket, close bracket. So your function definition, the structure of your function, is contained within those brackets. Now what do you want to bring into that function? You want to bring certain things in sometimes. You don't have to. We can do a function that just prints hello. Now let's, this won't do anything in it of itself. You have to load this function into memory and then call the function. So let's do that. Command enter on line 22. And you'll see over on the right hand side where my functions are, it says my function, function, right? So it's loaded in memory. Now let's use it. So now I can just do, I can call my underscore function, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, because it's a function. Now you can see in my console it says hello. Pretty simple, right? But now let's do a little bit more elaborate. Let's, let's take this to a new level. Let's create our own mean function, but it only will take the average of three digits. So we're gonna add parameters or arguments in our function. So let's say, mean3 is our, the name of the function. We're going to call it function. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis. I want to bring in numbers, right? Because I have to use them in my function. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to call it a, b, and c. You can call it whatever you want. Open bracket, close bracket. Simple as that. So now we're bringing in those numbers. We can use them. So I'm going to say result is equal to a plus b plus c all divided by 3, right? And I'm not going to run this yet. Now let's print the result. So we'll just say um, print, paste, we'll say the average is, the average is, comma, your result. So there we have it. Now you can paste, you can paste, you can allow uh, variables and strings all pasted together so it prints nicely. So let's run this as in, I mean, let's load this into memory. So go back to line 28 where that is, hit, hit the command enter button. No errors, which is good. Now you see up in my functions area, mean underscore three function A, B, C. Let's use that real quick. So now I'm gonna say mean three, open parenthesis. Now you can see the pop-up, it says uh, A, B, and C right there. It tells us, gives us a hint. So let's put in two, three, and four. We should get the same result as before. The average is three. So the average is three, that worked. We could try different numbers, it doesn't matter. It should always work. So we're really making reusable uh, pieces of our code here. So now, thinking about all that, let's go back to our plot and see if we can uh, make that into a function instead so that we can plot multiple things. Um, before we do that, there is something called default arguments in your functions. You'll see up here in mean three, I have A, B, and C here. Now if you didn't always want to have the uh, third argument in there, now this, this example is not going to make sense. You're going to Actually, it'll make sense. Let's say that you always had, this is an example, you always have either five in your set of numbers or some other number. But if the five is not there, it's automatically put there. So let's say, let's put where that C is, we're gonna say C is equal to five. Now, we're gonna rerun this function. We can't, if I run this now, you're gonna get the same result because I didn't reload the function into memory. So Take that into consideration. So command enter now, still no errors. My C equals five, that's true. But now when I call mean three, you're gonna see two, five, and four. But that four will override the C. So C does equal five if it's not explicitly stated. But it is, it's saying make that C a four. So you're gonna still get the same result once again. Now if I got rid of that four, 
and you do it with just the two parameters, you get a different average, right? Because it automatically put the five in there. So that's a default argument to your function. I think you kind of get the idea there. You can default them all to whatever you choose and you can override them, but be careful that if you default, say the first one like the A, but you don't default the second one or third one, and you only put in one parameter, um, it's gonna confuse the system, uh, the program. It doesn't know which one you're trying to assign it to. So just be careful on the number of parameters and the orders and things like that. We'll talk more in later episodes, but we've got this figured out. Functions are cool. Now let's go back up. If you haven't caught up with me from the last tutorial, um, we created a Fibonacci series, the first six or seven digits, and we wanted to plot them. So let's go ahead and do that again. You can pause this video and uh, write this code down to catch up if you don't have it. So I'm gonna command enter on the fib. We've got the fib vector loaded. Now let's plot that Fibonacci series once again, command enter. We've got this cool looking plot that's ridiculously sized and whatnot, but who cares? <laughs> so we wanna reuse this for other things besides fib. And I don't wanna cut and paste. Like what if I had a different set of numbers called um, another sequence, SEQ1. And we'll just make this one arbitrary. Uh, whatever numbers you want to use and a different number of numbers. You know, it doesn't have to be the same. It's anything you want to plot. It could be a, a column of numbers from your Excel file or your sheet. So command enter on that. You'll see that I can, I can now change fib to sequence one, command enter. And now look at this cool little plot. It's not called Fibonacci series, but we can, we can change that. And that's what we're about to do. Let's do that. So we're gonna create a plot function that plots a title and a set of data. And so we can do that. So let's think about this plot as a function instead of a plot. So in fact, we wanna plot something. So let's just encapsulate and close this plot um, function within a function of our own. That's actually called composition, by the way. When you have functions within functions, which is perfectly valid, that's called composition. So we're gonna call this my plot, and I'm gonna open close parentheses. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say my plot function is equal to, and now we gotta define the word, define function. How many parameters do we wanna bring in there? Well, we said we wanna bring in some data. So let's call it my data. We're gonna bring in some data. So the sequence one or the Fibonacci series or whatever data you wanna bring in. And I said we wanna change the title, so let's change the title. So let's call it my title. You can call it whatever you want. Now open bracket, close bracket, right? Now this time I wanna encapsulate that plot though. So let's go ahead and delete that second close bracket and bring it way down here after the plot. Now, now you've encapsulated that. Now you might want to also tab this out. This is typically what you do in programming is you will use white space and hit the tab button and bring it up a little bit. So you know, you can kind of see I have my font a little high so that you guys can see it better on the screen. But you can see how between that bracket and my plot, you can really see what's enclosed inside of that function. Now, if I do this here, we're still in trouble because we didn't replace sequence one with my data. So let's do that. Because right now, if I run this function, in fact, let's do that just to give you a little taste of it. You should get no errors. Ran it, no errors. We called it my plot. Now, if I, let's delete this here, just so you know it's not the same one. We're gonna call, I'll call it down here. I'll call it my plot, my underscore plot with it. With no, oh, it's got two arguments. I can put the two arguments in there. I'll put in, say, the number two in a vector and a title, my title. And you'll see that nothing is really gonna change when I run this. It still says Fibonacci series and it still has that data. Well, that's because we didn't replace it with these two parameters that we are trying to bring in. So sequence one, we don't want sequence one, we want my data. And we don't want this title, we want my title. Let's reuse and make this more versatile, my title. Okay, now we have to reload this function into memory. Command enter, ah, error. Let's see what the error is. My data not found. I do this all the time. Um, you need to go to line four and hit enter to, re to reload the whole function. You can actually uh, run pieces of the function inside of it. If I click on line 10 and I hit enter, you know, that's why I got the error. We load it into memory now. Now if I go back, or now if I want to actually call this function, I can say my plot, if I hit tab, see it automatically, thanks to RStudio, automatically gives you the functions that you've created in a list form. So my plot, I wanna bring in data and a title. What data? Let's bring in the sequence 
one data that we have above, and I'm going to call it sequence one. Command enter on that. Now you see on the on the plot we have sequence one, and it's got the data. So we can also do fib. There we go. We have sequence one with fib. We can call it whatever we want, and that's how you can reuse plots very simply. So create the most beautiful, aesthetically pleasing plot you want, and then encapsulate it into a function, and you can reuse it all day long. And of course, you can bring in more parameters and set more values if you don't want to, but the idea is um, you get a lot of these attributes set the way you like so that you don't have to keep bringing in all that data every time you want to plot something. Minimal use. I like this one because it's got two arguments only. So once we make this as pretty and aesthetically pleasing as we like, with all of our fonts, our sizes, um, the look and feel, make it into a function and reuse it. So my goal is to grow this channel into a monetized channel. I'm not even close, but that is a goal. So if you share and subscribe and let the world know that I exist, please do so and I'll continue these, these tutorials. Thanks.